Hi, I'm Rika. Hi, I'm Rachel. Hey, can you guys start each other in Okay, so for Rachel, right, I think she's very loud and unbothered and very sociable also. Um, for me, I think Rika is very organized. She's very reliable and very comforting as a person. So for each of you guys, how do you usually present? Uh, so for me, I think I present myself like I have this ideal like person that I want to be in my head. Someone who's like very likable by people, very approachable, very friendly. So like that's how I try to like present myself to people and I try to like honestly I don't try to stand out. I just try to fit in the crowd, be like um like a very regular person, I guess. I think the way that she described me was actually quite accurate. You know, I am loud and a very sociable person. I do enjoy mixing around with different groups of people, just getting to know, you know, other people. And I guess I'm quite unbothered in a sense that if you don't like my mannerisms or like what I do or what I say, then we're just not gonna be friends. <laughs> yeah. So when do you guys feel like you have to hide yourself? Mm, for me, I feel like. I try to hide myself the most when I'm in public. Like I mentioned just now, like I don't try to stand out from the crowd. I kind of just like blend in and just like try to like be like everyone else basically. Yeah. Is there like a specific situation or...? Mm, I think probably when I'm with people that I'm not comfortable with. So like people that I'm not really close to, I just try to like um put like carry myself like as small as possible, be as small as possible and just like Hide and like don't like stand out from everyone. So when I'm with people that I'm not comfortable with, yeah. Mm, I think that would just be like being really quiet and like not talking to people when it is not necessary. So I don't go out of my way to like um talk to people, meet new people, and like uh enter conversations. I kind of just keep to myself. So like, that's what I consider like my hiding also. And Rachel, do you feel that that's something that you noticed as well? Maybe, like the first time you met her, was there anything that you thought? Mm, the first time we met, we were actually like from the same group project. And I, I guess like looking back at it now, I guess she was fairly like quiet and more shy. I don't know whether like I'm remembering correctly, but I think um amongst like our group, I was usually the one like initiating conversations and just getting people together. Why are yeah. you? Why are you doing? I, I don't know. Was <laughs> I? I think for me, I I would say I hide very differently from the way she does because like um out in public, I'm usually much more social and loud, you know, but. I use I tend to hide more a little bit at home, but I don't hide in a sense where I try to make myself small or like quiet. I just simply don't exist. <laughs> you know, um I just because my I have quite a few family members and we kinda of live very private lives. So I usually just exist in my own room alone and I usually only go out if I need to use the toilet or <laughs> I have to eat. <laughs> that's that's the only time where I exist outside of my room where I have to interact with my family. Yeah. And what does that non-existent feel like? Mm, for me, I feel that it kind of presents itself in the fact that I'm quite disconnected from my family. Like, even around when we have dinner around the dining table, usually it's just my dad and my grandmother talking and like, I just quickly finish my meal and disappear <laughs> from the dining table. Yeah. Do you feel that that's something that contributes to how you are outside of the home? Mm, I would say I feel that when I'm outside, I I allow myself to you know just be a bit more loud and unbothered because if you don't like me, like that's your problem, you know. But if my family <laughs> don't like me, uh, that's <laughs> that's not great, you know, in a sense. Yeah. Is there maybe like one? Honestly, for me, I feel that the significance of the chess is that my family always eats together. Like, 
it's to the point that sometimes I honestly feel offended when they eat before me, before I get home. Like sometimes my mom will text me and say like, are you, are you coming home yet? And I was like, yeah, I'll be home for dinner. And then when I come home, I already see people like eating dinner. And I'm like, you didn't wait for me. <laughs> yeah, so it gets to that extent sometimes. Because I think um maybe it's just like a cultural thing, but like um families like our Malay family usually like eats almost like every meal together as much as possible. And also like I feel the chairs are significant because um, when my friends come over also, my family will also invite my friends to eat with us at the dinner table, which is, I, I find that actually it's not really common in a lot of families. Yeah, so I think that's significant to me. Um, I would say, in a sense, my family, we like do eat dinner together, but I'm always trying to rush off somewhere else. Um, so like, I wouldn't say that family or like the chairs in like my side of the exhibition would resonate the most to me. For me, funnily enough, it would actually be the hair dye or the red hair conditioner because I feel like the way that I dress or the way that I look at my appearance is what makes me me and that is how I feel the most comfortable in my own skin even though it may seem very like loud and obnoxious to other people because like why are you walking around with like only half of your hair red, right? Like, and it's like, to be the only person in the entire school looking like this, you know? It, but to me, it's so comfortable. Like the first time I ever transitioned to this hair, it just felt so right. Like, it never, it was like, oh my God, this was like who I was meant to be, you know, kind of thing, yeah. So for mine, it's in like uh, at the leaf lobby there because uh, for me, there's actually like a significant story behind it because um, you know how the leaf lobby is where we usually interact with people um, by chance and like that. So like there's this one time that um, uh, my mom and I, I think it was the Hari Raya season, so we came back in like our traditional clothing and then um, there was like another family like of another race there that was also waiting for the leaf. So um, when we when the lift came, we went inside the lift first. There was only two of us, and they also had only had two people. So we held the door for them, but they kind of just like, like you know, like um, like stepped away and pretend that we weren't holding the door for them. So uh, my mom and I were like so confused. We were like, why though? Like we don't usually get um this treatment on a day that we are like you know wearing normal clothes and like we are less like identifiable. So I felt like yeah, like suddenly I'm getting this treatment because like I'm showing like um something like a part of me like my identity which is like my culture so like i felt um that i was quite i don't know offended or confused like that kind of feeling so i think that's just something that's really stuck to me till this day especially because i have to visit this space every single day and like have this kind of like a constant lingering thought at the back of my head about this yeah so um I think it's significant to me because like it just represents how like inside the lift it's kind of like the transition between like my private space which is where I feel the most comfortable with myself the most at home um, and the transition between that and a public space where like I am start to I have to start to conceal parts of my identity so that I don't like be perceived by other people. Yeah. I would say mine is slightly more vague because it's not directly, I don't have a very specific experience to tie all this together. But I would say, you know, how my side of the exhibition is staged where the the chairs and me who's standing nearer to like the door, like my my house door, um, you know, are like parts where I hide, you know, things that I hide about myself. Whereas where we try, we get further away from my door, you know, along the corridor and we go nearer to like the whole lift lobby area or like my neighbor's side of the corridor. It's where we have things which represent how I show myself more than hide. Yeah. Okay, so for me, being seen to me just basically means see like somebody seeing me for who I am. Um, usually, I'm often mistaken as like Chinese or like um, at least mixed. So like whenever I go to buy like um, food from the coffee shop or something, then the auntie will speak to me in Chinese. So like I, I kind of just like, um, my identity gets kind of vague there. So it's like not seeing me for like who I am. But like there's this one time that I went to a hairdresser and 
like it was during the fasting month so I was fasting and you know how usually hairdressers like will would like offer like tea, coffee so like the hairdresser to, um, asked me uh, told me like oh uh, you don't need any refreshments right like you're cause you're fasting right then I'm like oh like it's the it's the first time that like I didn't have to say and like um like I got recognized for like um who I am like my identity the part of me and I think that was that was one instance that I felt like I was seen. So honestly, being seen to me just means being seen for who I am, all parts of my identity, like my culture, my personality, how I dress, all of that. That's as I am. Yeah. I mean, I think to be seen for me has like two very different takes per se, you know. In the public, we can take seen as just surface value. Like you see me, you know, because I look like this. I mean, there's no way I can blend into the crowd, right? But on the other end, being seen at home is the fact that I don't have to hide certain thoughts or certain things that I say. I don't have to like self-censor around my family members and I know that I can be comfortable with them, which hopefully we'll get there one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, let me think. Um, this feels like a love confession. <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing I would like to say is just that, like, um, I hope that even though you're not seen in the way you want to at home, like, I hope, I hope you get there one day. Like, your family gets there one day. And I hope you know that you are seen by your classmates for, like, who you are. And yes, we just take the whole Rachel. Yeah. Uh, I think for me, I I hope that one day you realize that you allow yourself to be seen in public, that like you don't need to hide, you know. We have fans, we all accept you for who you are and I also want other people to see you the way that we see you as well. Yeah. <laughs>